Hi there, my name is Kendrick, and today I'm doing an awesome interview between Kirk, Courtney and Tamara. Um, Courtney is the standard INFP and Tamara is the jumper INFP, so I'll get them to introduce themselves. So Courtney, go for it first. All right, I am an INFP standard, uh, double feminine, F-I-N-E, consume, play, blast, sleep. All right, and then Tamara? So I'm an INFP jumper, uh, MF. F-I-S-I, uh, sleep, consume, play, blast. All right, cool. So it's good to have both of you back again. And uh, I think the first thing that uh, we, me and Courtney were talking about earlier is you guys look similar. We do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the same shirt. We got the same hair. <laughs> INFPs. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. yeah. And the only difference is Tamar looks more sleepy than you, which makes yeah. sense. Thank it's you. actually interesting. I was telling you, I think my little sister is a 9 P jumper and she actually looks more like my little sister than me. Like, <laughs> so if you saw her, you would, you would be like, oh yeah, I see that. Okay. Now, now I'm curious. <laughs> I yeah. To... I'll have to find a photo. <laughs> yeah. 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 We definitely need more jumpers. So hopefully yeah, she will get typed eventually. So we'll get her. <laughs> um, okay guys. So first question, I, I want to jump into the introvert feeling first. Um, so what I noticed with people with introvert feeling, because I did that panel interview with all the IP types, and uh, there seems to be like a pattern between people with TI wanting to be the best and an FI wanting to be the most original or different. Um, so both of those still want to stand out from the tribe, but in a different way. Uh, of course, some FI people want to be the best too, and some TI wants to be original also. But there seems to be like more clustering between FI wanting to be more original and different. So I want to ask you both, um, how do you both relate to that sentiment? Do you feel like being different and original is like super important to you, you know, as like a, as an INFP or, or is that something that's like, eh, it's fine. It's not a big deal. Like, let's go with Courtney first. Cause you're the, the extroverted one here. Yeah, I think it is. I mean, like, just look at the way I cut my hair. Like, like who cuts their hair like this? Me. Um, <laughs> uh, I am like into art. I like creating stories and all this stuff. And I feel like that makes me really original. And I love that about myself. And I like thrive on that for sure. Yeah. Tomorrow? Uh, yeah, I thought about that since uh, our last interview. And uh, I've been trying to like figure out well, why, why is that? And uh, I think I have uh, some kind of uh, inferiority complex uh, that um, uh, I mean, I don't think I can uh, compete with my FI. Uh, so, uh, because the world is like very ST, you know, and I'm ST last and I'm a mope and everything. Uh, so I guess uh, if I was just going for like being the best at something, uh, I don't think I could uh, compete. I, I would be like outdone <laughs> pretty soon. So I, I think like, uh, that that's what I've been trying to do, like with the work and studies, to find uh, find a sort of niche, like something that I can contribute. If that makes sense, <laughs> it does. It does. Um, so the biggest difference between you guys is uh, Courtney is a very extroverted INFP, and Tamara, you're like a super introverted um, INFP, and. Uh, during one of the classes that David Chen had in Objective Personality, is they were talking about like the introverted and extroverted IPs, where the IP that's more introverted is like, I'm sitting on the throne, come to me, worship me, right? Well, like the, the extroverted IP is more like yelling at people, hey, come look at me, you know, look at me. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm different, I'm unique, I'm the best. So you guys are both live in that two opposite worlds. I want to ask you both how you feel about that sentiment like, let's go with Courtney first again so you know the sentiment like look at me you know you're like shouting at people to look at you and like you know kind of trying to get attention in a more extrovert way do you relate with that sentiment like personally yeah I think so and when I saw that video first I was like no not me that's not me and it was like it like hurt and I was like oh if it hurts that's probably me so I've been thinking about it a lot and yeah like that's my whole game I'm just like everyone look at me like I'm gonna make um, like the way I dress, uh, the way I like talk, I guess, uh, is kind of just all feeding into that, I think. So I make a lot of like hand gestures and I think that's 
supposed to like grab people's attention because of my the extroverted part of me. So yeah. Cool. And then tomorrow, what about you being like the, the king, the, the person sitting on the throne and you know, people come <laughs> what we deal was this? Was this recently or I think it's a while back, like maybe last year or something, maybe. But they made a video, it's like the the the, the IP, you know, like you know, because IP wants to be just the center of attention essentially, or they, they want to be the best or whatever. Um, but you know, it's just the extrovert introverted IP uh, IPs uh, go about it in a different way. So you're the introverted one, so it's more like yeah, you know, kind of like being unique and different. So people have no choice but to look at you, and kind of like the being mysterious because you're introverted also kind of draws people to you, you know. So do you feel like you do that on purpose, like, or is that something you don't do at all? Um, well, on purpose, like, um, I guess you you always. Um, like us uh, IPs especially, but uh, like uh, you're always closest to yourself. So, um, I mean, I, th I think it's a pretty human thing to to just uh, think that, um, well, how I think and how, how, I, uh, how I work, that's like the normal thing. So for me, it's always been normal to, to be introverted and uh, like, uh, I I didn't get why you, like some of my friends wanted so much attention and uh, like talked a lot and uh, I don't know like even if I if I wanted to be like that I mean I could for a while but uh, I would like just run out of energy <laughs> I, I I wouldn't be able to continue with that for a long time I would be just like exhausted I think. So uh, based on what you said, it sounds like maybe that thing that they posted a while back, maybe it applies more to people with extrovert sensing because they're more uh, they're more competitive than people with extrovert intuition. You know, that, that's what I noticed. I think that makes sense. Yeah. Um, okay. So we'll leave that be for now. Now, the cool thing about both of you guys here uh, is now you have a chance to learn from each other because you guys both live in the opposite world of like INFP land. So basically... Um, Tamara has whatever, whatever you don't have, Courtney, because she lives in that like sleep consume world. Mm -hmm. And then Courtney has something that you don't have tomorrow because she lives in that like more like the play blast world, you know, because she's like super extroverted. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is like, I want to open you guys to ask each other questions on like what you want to learn from the same type, same sexual modality and everything, but on the opposite, opposite land. Like what do you guys want to learn? It's yeah. also a good chance because you can practice the opposite side if you learn from like, you know, someone that's like you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always good to like have someone who's opposite you to like compare to like see. So it's good. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. Courtney, what question would you have for tomorrow? In, in, in okay, regards? I have like a whole list of like random questions. Yeah, that's, that's great. It's great. Oh, um, no, no. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so I guess something I'm wondering is, um, are you, would you consider yourself like artistic? Like, do you do any arts or crafts or how would you go about doing that? Um, yeah, well, I guess so. Like I, I studied architecture in school, um, so yeah. uh, and and uh, like that was a very important thing for me, like to be able to have some kind of creative outlet, uh, like especially when I was younger. Um, but with age, I mean that that has uh, decreased quite a bit, but. Um, yeah, like I, I remember when I was little, like uh, before I started school, I would draw like all the time. Uh, like my parents would uh, buy me these, um, like, what do you call them? Uh, like these uh, pads, like that you can put a lot of uh, paper. So you mm -hmm. can just, uh, I can just like draw like a hundred drawings in a row or something so uh, yes I love that as a kid um, and uh, but now as I've gotten older and uh, like I've gotten more into like create creative writing um, I, I really enjoy that uh, yeah yeah that's uh, kind of I think what I would have expected actually because um, my little sister is also an artist too, but she does it in a very different way than I do. And that's kind of what you said. You, you do it more structured. 
Whereas I'm just like wild and like all over the place. And like, I don't draw like anatomy. I just draw like whatever I feel like, but whereas my sister is sitting there like figuring out how to draw like the arm and like exactly how it looks. And that's kind of what architecture I would assume is. It's like very structured art, which is kind of interesting. I like that. <laughs> All right, Tamara, what question would you have for Courtney? <laughs> uh, well, uh, I wonder if, have you heard of the FISI loop? Yeah, I think so. I have heard yeah. of that. Yeah, so that's uh, like uh, uh, a topic that's kind of often um, discussed in like uh, INFP groups, mm -hmm. internet. Uh, so, um, uh, if I understand it correctly, it's like uh, uh, when an INFP is in an FISI loop, uh, they kind of go over something in the past, like uh, very nostalgically or sentimentally, and uh, that can like go on and on for years. Uh, or I, I guess it could be like a temporary crisis, also like. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, but um, I was thinking as, as you have um, uh, sleep last. Uh, so uh, I, I was wondering if that's uh, uh, something you're familiar with and, and have experienced uh, yourself, or is that just like a, a tiny part of your like experience of life since, since you have it last? Yeah, I think it definitely is. I actually um, am diagnosed with PTSD complex PTSD. So it is basically that literally going back to the past and like being obsessed with like this one event that like happened to me and just like constantly looping. And so that happened. And because I think I have sleep last, it, it took me a long time to figure out like, that's what I was doing. I was like living my life, like traumatized and like, didn't even know it for a really, really long time. And so, yeah, I, I would say that, yeah, I do deal with that. A little okay. bit, but it's hard because I'm single pinging. So, uh -huh. I yeah. think this is why um, a lot of um, INFPs are amazing writers because of that, like F I S I looping. Like J.K. Rowling, for example, you know, mm -hmm. with like Harry Potter, like, um, you know, your known information is so well honed that, you know, you can write into an you know S I organized format. You know, writing the feeling. And you can take people along the journey and get them emotionally uh, invested along the way. So I think- Yeah, uh, I think so. I actually do write as well. So it's kind of interesting that we both write. Um, we're both kind of attached to the F that FISI thing where we're just like writing the emotions and then writing like the experiences and just, yeah. Okay, so since we're on the topic of FISI, um, it's interesting because um, it's different from the other types. So basically, at the end of the day with FISI, um, you're organizing who you are as a person. So my question to you guys then is, and I asked this to the ISTJ interview because same function stack, just different order. Who do you want to be? You know, so like- That is a good question. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask tomorrow first because Courtney, you're asleep last to, get, to buy you some time to think about it. So I think the, maybe tomorrow already thought about this before. So tomorrow, who do you want to be as a person or in, you know? And whatnot. Who do I want to be? Um, yeah. Well, like difficult that. question, but uh, I guess uh, like if you, I really want to know the, the answer to that, um, I have to look at uh, where I where I spend my time and how I uh, prioritize and uh, like what what is important to me. And I want to be. Uh, Mm, I, I'm kind of vain. I have to, uh, uh, I have to admit, like, uh, I'm that this is kind of difficult to think to you because, uh, like, it's important for me how I appear. Uh, like, both, uh, like, I'm worried that uh, I'm going to say something stupid. I'm, I'm going to look strange or something so uh, uh, I guess it's important for me to be accepted and uh, like 
I want to be like uh, um, the, the word that I'm thinking of is like the word virtuous, but it's um, like people don't talk about that really, but uh, I want to uh, like what I what I don't want to be is someone who who gets like um, uh, like stuck in my own uh, like uh, bad habits. Um, so uh, yeah, but just it, it seems like I want to be like a, this great saint or something, but. It, I mean that that sounds pretty narcissistic, but I I, I just want to, um, like be the person I'm supposed to be and be it well. Mm. <laughs> like you want to be good at being you, essentially. A kind of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but but what 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 is the best you though? Like what? How do you see yourself as like like your ideal self? Like how do you ideally want to be? Like what is your best self? Like if you could paint a picture. Uh, well, this has changed with the years. I'm trying uh, really hard to be self-accepting. Um, okay. And uh, um, to be my best self, that, that, that's different, like different ages, different stages, uh, depending on where I live, what I do. Uh, so that's, that's difficult to say, like, but... Um, um i think the important thing is uh like to be um, uh, to be like an asset to the tribe um and uh, like because i'm an ip i uh, like i'm focused inward so much uh but uh, i i've been experienced like uh no matter how much uh, uh, I look inwards, there's something I can't do um, just by continuing on my default. And that is like, uh, if I if I can't help the tribe or I can't uh, like uh, use like talents or experience uh, to help someone else, then uh, then I feel like I've failed. I think that makes sense. Yeah. Um, it sounds like uh, you're trying to figure out what the best version of yourself is in order to like, essentially like get the tribe to like you or get the tribe to like understand you. Is that kind of what you're saying? Uh, yeah, I, I like I do want them to to like me, but I uh, uh, you know, some, sometimes you can uh, contribute contribute in a way like that uh, people don't like, but uh, mm -hmm. after a while they, they value it. So mm -hmm. it's it's not about really being popular or something, but uh, like but, like being accepted. Well, being accepted and uh, like I've tried uh, I've tried so hard, like uh, having uh, like a normal job and uh, and uh, like yeah becoming like an adult that way but it hasn't worked out very well so uh, well i i guess like i've tried so many things and uh, uh, i don't want to say i failed but uh, like i found i've been like a searcher uh, for a very long time and found out like all the ways that uh, doesn't work for me and uh, I've uh, I've seen like when when I've uh, uh, how, how I can uh, how I can earn a living and how uh, how I can help others and how I can be part of, of a group um, and uh, like with the years I've I've steered like more and more uh, and to like uh, yeah i live alone i i try to work as little as possible just uh, so much that i can pay the bills and 
like I really enjoy my free time and the, and stuff like that. So I've uh, uh, I've seen that okay, the tra traditional life maybe isn't for me. That isn't yeah. my thing or whatever. So I that uh, that's fine. <laughs> Definitely. Um, so tomorrow, I, I like um, I I want to go back to the word that you used earlier. You said you want to be valuable to the tribe, mm -hmm. and then you also mm -hmm. said that uh, you don't necessarily need people to like you and or be popular, but mm -hmm. but you you want you would like to be valued later on, even if at the moment whatever that you do for the tribe is not something that they would feel good about. So it sounds like it sounds like it's te. It sounds like it's te. You yeah. Know? It, yeah. 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 Right. Maybe. It sounds like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, valuable um, to the tribe. Yeah, TE. Yeah, it sounds like TE. And then, like, they, they did a video again a long time ago of like uh, people with FE in the bottom versus TE in the bottom. And TE people seems to want to connect through work or some kind of project. And I did notice that with the ISF piece as well. Like, they like if someone invites them for collaboration, oh, they're like, love it. They're like, oh, oh, I, I they try to invite me to work together. Oh, sweet. You know, and so. Um, I'm like, you want me to be interviewed? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <so. laughs> yeah. yeah collaborations. Ooh. But anyways, yes. uh, so Courtney, let's let's jump into you now uh, for, for this same question. Um, so who do you want to be? Yeah, uh, so this is an interesting question for me because I literally actually, when I was younger, um, created a fake character who I wanted to be, it wasn't me, but it was this other person and she had black hair. I like drew her all the time. I wanted to be this person and I like slowly became her. And then eventually was like, this isn't me. And like cut all my hair off, like bleached my hair, fried it, went into like a deep depression for like a couple of months. And then now I'm actually trying to be like me, <laughs> like not this fictional other person. So. Uh, yeah, it's like something I think about a lot, I think, and I didn't even realize, and I think this is the sleep last probably, like I didn't even realize I was thinking about this person I wanted to be. I was just trying to be valuable to the tribe. I was trying, and that's who, that's who I like, I like disconnected uh, my world from the world itself and literally like created a fictional person for myself to be. And like this person was valuable to the tribe. That was like the bottom line. So, yeah, <laughs> fun. <laughs> that's so interesting. I think that's so, I find it so weird. It's like, you know, like you're an IP, but you're sleep last. So you would have identity issues. It's, it's so, it's so. Oh yeah. So I used weird. to dye my hair every color. I used to, especially like I, uh, my mom wouldn't let me dye it black when I was younger because I wanted to have it black because my character's hair was black. That's what I chose. Yeah. And so I dyed it like pink and purple and like, dark brown and then I slowly got to the point where I was just like it's black I got married with black hair and then chopped it all off and changed my entire like life <laughs> and now I, I don't think I could ever dye my hair again I think this is it this is who I am I see so you kind of went like a full circle um, mm -hmm. it was very like EP very ENFP vibe but I was like searching for myself and I didn't I didn't know how to find it for yeah, a long time. it sounds very EJ like like the EJ EJ issues of like not knowing. yeah it's really interesting how IPs and EJs kind of have the same issues and that's kind of what Tamara was talking about too where you think IPs would just want to be like all involved in themselves and just uh kind of like selfish but like at the at the end of the day we're trying to be valuable to the tribe we have that same tidal wave just like kind of in reverse like we're doing our things first and then we're like oh man but I'm not valuable to the tribe so that's kind of how yeah that's kind of how I Develop. All right. Well, this is perfect for uh, the next question then. Uh, so we'll transition to um, to to that, um, which it just flew out of my head. Oh my God, I hate my SI. It keeps flying away. I, I had a perfect question. It just flew, flew out of my head. <laughs> well, oh God. Um, yeah, I was going to ask you guys something about being valuable to the tribe. And then, oh yeah, right. I remember now. So um, you're an IP. So your swing is EJ, right? Um, and your swing is ESTJ. So you become an ESTJ. It's weird. I can never oh, imagine that. That's so weird. Like an, an INFP swing is an, an ESTJ essentially. Um, so the EJ's problems are not knowing their identity. So Courtney, you kind of talked about that already. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that they have issues with is 
self-loathing. Okay. So, oh, good um, Lord. so, yeah, so, so I want to ask you guys about that. Like, um, as an IP, do you ever have swings where you, you know, for one minute you're like, yeah, I'm the best. I'm the great. I'm like so different. And then the next minute you're like, oh, I hate myself. You know, it's like, it's like, I was like, what the hell? You know, because that's like, that's the swing, right? That's the EJ swing. Oh, you got to talk to and then, and then you start becoming about that. So, <laughs> yeah. And then you start becoming needy, you know, which is like an EJ thing. It's like you become needy, you know. Um, th- does that ever happen to you guys? Like, you know. Every like, day. Every day. Oh, okay, Courtney, let's, let's <laughs> start with you day. first. Let's start with you first and then we'll go to tomorrow. Um, yeah, I, I'm like, I feel like I have a lot of, com- at this point in my life, I have a lot of confidence in myself, but I still like can't shake that. I used to, when I was in high school, I just had like zero self-confidence. That's one of the reasons why I made this character because I hated myself <laughs> um, and I wanted to be somebody else. Uh, and I didn't think I was, I didn't think I was valuable. I thought I was like just a freak. I thought I was different and no one understood me in the IP, like, uh, but, but yeah. Uh, where was I going with that? Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I still have the swings though. I still like will, some days I look at myself in the mirror and I'm like, I'm the best. Like, I'm cool. Like, look at this hair. I cut it myself and I'm cool because of it. Um, I keep talking about my hair, but, um, yeah. But then other days I'm just like, I hate myself. Like what, like, who is this person? Like, I want to be someone cool. Like I'm not cool. And it's just like, it'll, it'll flip and like one thing will happen and then I'll just like dip. And I'm, I'm not like bipolar or anything, but like, it's crazy like the amount of emotions that I feel and the intensity and like the intensity of them and I guess that's like an FI thing FF first probably FE people feel the same way but yeah it's definitely intense and I definitely have that like that EJ kind of battle I guess that same battle um so Courtney I noticed that you peacock SF a lot because that's probably your fourth right. Yeah, it's your fourth <laughs> animal. So you're talking about your hair a lot, which is like SF, right? And then, yeah, uh, and I'm like, but it's like my one asset. I'm like, yeah, my hair, but like I have nothing else to talk about. It's like my one FS peacock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and you're talking about like being popular. Like I want to be popular. You know, it's like ah. Oh. So it's like it's like an obs- the obsession with your fourth um, animal. And then Tamara yeah. earlier, she was talking about like wanting to be valuable with a tribe. So yeah. I think she she's peacocking the ST. Like I want to do <laughs> do well. Or the tribe, you know, like be like the, the doer, you know. So that makes sense. That's yeah, good. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Um, well, let's go back to this with Tamara now. Do you uh do you also have those sentiments of feeling like uh self-loathing or getting needy, like kind of like an EJ swing? Do you have that? And then you could also talk about like, you know, like peacocking your fourth animal, like being the doer, the ST, you know, <laughs> like uh yeah, so about self-loading. Um well, um uh I guess like uh, uh, I've uh, I've had this thought some sometimes like uh, okay I'm an IP like FI and that's pretty damn difficult <laughs> like in this world uh, so I've been wondering well why why haven't I like why have, am I not like at rock bottom like how how have I I mean I still have a functioning life right so um, and uh, I I can remember like deep, deep feeling as of uh, yeah self loathing and regret and uh, very high ideals that I can't live up to, uh, and I I feel this way when I'm depressed and it's like the worst feeling in the world, uh, but I've noticed like. Um, I have a lot of envy, uh, especially for those uh, EJ, IG, J types that get who get this stuff done and like are can be traditionally successful. I have those uh, uh, feelings of envy like pretty often. Um, but I've noticed also that uh, I do have like some genuine uh, like joy in being me like I mean I, I I'm thinking okay well I, if I'm gonna be this a TE girl who who uh, like does everything and is the president of uh, this and this organization uh, well I wouldn't enjoy that and uh, when, when I look 
into like my deepest sources of joy and in, in, like flow and uh, peace it's when uh, when I do something that I like I feel like I have a lot of freedom in uh, like being a little weird and not conforming to uh, uh, like this traditional life so uh, uh, and uh, and it's it's uh, it's deeper than I, I think because I when I try to analyze myself I I see this envy 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 it comes up pretty often but uh, mm, if I didn't have like this uh, deep rooted uh, like joy uh, that that couldn't be so so I'm very I'm very grateful. Um, I think I've uh, I've developed this with the years. It hasn't it hasn't been easy, but uh, like I feel like I'm at a, such a place right now that uh, uh, I, I'm not afraid of. Okay, I, I can't say like I'm never gonna have depression again or have a crisis or anything, but I feel like I've uh, been through. Um, so much and uh, like uh, slowly slowly over the years developed like a healthy core so uh, I um, yes I don't I don't I don't think I will get to that point anymore I hope and uh, you you said something about like when I'm uh, like the ESTJ (laughs) like uh, like Shannon and Dave have this stereotype, like this mustache police officer. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that in your closet. I'm just kidding. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I like I. I'm very much like. Uh, uh, I think we talked about this. Like uh, I flip, uh, like this and this. Like I'm. I'm not very good at being consistent. And like I have a bit of mild ADD, so it could be that too. But um, uh, anyway, so uh, I'm usually in this smoke land. Uh, but then um, suddenly like something happens and we have this expression in Sweden, like uh, you're like a scalded ferret. So you like run around and like when I realize I some something happens and I feel like I'm not where I should be, like I, I become very, like I put down every little thing in my calendar and, and check it and uh, like see if everything works and uh, uh, and uh, yeah, I th- did I have this happen like uh, actually a couple of days ago? Like I've noticed. That I have a lot of bruises on my leg, like little small bruises. Uh, and, uh, okay, this is kind of random, but I, I, I don't know where they came from. And then I realized like, uh, well, uh, like I have too much stuff at home and I live like in a very small apartment. So I, I keep uh, walking into stuff all the time. And, uh, uh, and then I was like, no, I hate these bruises. So I have to like, get rid of stuff and uh, when, when I really want to do it I can do the the ST um, it, it takes a, a while to warm it up but uh, eventually I can be the, the mustache ESTJ if I have to yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah you said a lot of things that like resonated with me in that which you talked <laughs> a lot about envy and I'm that's definitely something that I deal with too and I think from a perspective of because I have SF last, I wanted nothing more than in high school than to be popular. And mm. I don't actually think I would have been happy if I was popular. It's kind of the same thing you were talking about. So yeah. And then the whole thing about bruises, you walking around and walking into things that happens to me too all the time. <laughs> but it's interesting because I would think that since you have, I always thought that came from SI, but you're F-I-S-I. So I guess it doesn't come from SI. It comes from something else. So that's interesting. Yeah, I, I think Tamara is like double activated NF consumed. Is she? Double yeah, activated yeah. NF. Consumed. Yeah. So, so gotcha. she, yeah. Yeah. I mean, 
even for me, I'm lead end. I think it's a lead end thing. Like me and my girlfriend, we have so much bruises too. Like our feet. Oh yeah, I have bruises all over my body. I'm like, where yeah. is yeah, this happening? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the real world is not real. So. <laughs> no, yeah, the real world isn't real. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there is no world. Like what? Yeah. Yeah, that's why you bump it to stuff because it's yeah, like yeah. I'm small. like, I don't care about the real world. I'm living in my own fantasy world all yeah. the time. All right, so this is the perfect transition, actually. So I wanted to ask you guys um, an FI question. So I interviewed Courtney's best friend just a few days ago. It's Brittany. Um, so she's, <laughs> the, she's an INTP. And uh, I'll, I'm going to interview them both next time, as like uh, sometime in the future, as like best best friends. Because it's interesting, INFP and INTP as best friends. It's like, whoa, that, that's yeah. something you can hear very oh, often. Oh, it got, it got but it, it, Maybe it's more common than you think. Who knows? Um, <clears throat> so anyways, when I was interviewing her, she said something to me that made me think, I'm like, is this the TI superpower? She said she always makes reasonable goals because TI, right? So reasonable mm-hmm. goals that she always hits. And every time she hits a goal, her confidence goes up. Now, Tamara, earlier when you were talking, you said that, you know, you'll think of something about yourself and then the the, the actual reality does not match up to the fantasy, right? You mm-hmm. know, of like how you should be. Um, it's because, you know, it's FI, it's not TI, right? It's not reasonable. It's like, you know, I, it's an ideal goal, but it's not like a reasonable goal. So, you know, and every time you don't achieve your vision, then your self-esteem drops down a few notches, right? So the, yeah. the, the, the TI's advantage to that is like, yeah, this is realistic. So I'm going to hit it every time. And I can be like, yeah, super confident. And it can be like, I always hit my goal, you know? So it's like a, it's like a superpower. Um, however, uh, I'll, I'll just, a, just a quick uh, off-tangent story that is completely related to this. Um, so in David Chan's class, they always talk about like several different alphas that they kind of go back to. Uh, one of them that they talk about is Owen Cook. He's an ENFP, but you know, FI, right? So when, when they were talking, so I, I, I do like to watch some of his videos. And recently I came across one of his video and he was talking about like success. And I thought it was like a really good topic, you know? Because he said he has lots of friends that has like more money than him, like mil- hundreds of millions of dollars. And they're always going up to him saying, you know, you could be making more money or you can, you could have more success. Why are you doing all this public speaking stuff? Why are you coaching people? Why are you doing all this stuff when you can be making more money? And Owen Cook like, said, those people, they're not even on my level. Hundred million dollars. Every m- moment of my life I spend, I am doing something I love. And that is worth more than the, the the success written on paper you know like like feeling that passion that that joy of like public speaking of helping people of coaching people you know and like just pursuing what he loves right and you can't help but agree with him because it's true you know because ideally like what do you get money for and success isn't it to be happy well what if what if you're already happy doing what you doing what you love then what's up what's the point of having all that other stuff right so I kind of want to ask you guys about the FI superpower. Like, what is your superpower with that introvert feeling? Um, do you feel like, so Tamara was saying earlier, like she's kind of happy where she is, even though she's just working to get enough enough money so that so she can sustain her life. Because it's, it's honestly, it's, she's happy already, right? Uh, I mean, sure, of course, you can connect with people through work and be more valuable. So obviously you're going to work on that. But, you know, it's so as you guys with the introvert feeling, what do you think is your superpower? You know, do you think that, and that, do you think that sentiment I just mentioned is also something that's powerful? Uh, yeah, I think, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of like angles we could take here. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was talking to Stephanie the other day about like emotions, like the way that I experience emotions is very deep and very like, uh, like it's intense and sometimes that's a bad thing but sometimes that's a good thing like I experience love very intense and deeply and I can spread that like to the world I guess and I, I love connection with people and I know that kind of seems like an FE thing but I think for me it's very personal like it, the the connection I feel to people is personal and deep and emotional and I love that about FI I think like and with art and I used to write a lot of poetry, like I feel very, uh, I don't want to say poetic, but it's, my life feels very poetic. Like it feels like a fantasy and I love the way it feels. Like it feels really good to be me sometimes. And sometimes it's hard, but like it is, FI is about like feeling that vibe that, that we're kind of after. So yeah, like creating that for myself and 
kind of taking that to other people. Like, I think I have a friend who I think is an ENFJ. I'm not really sure, but she's like constantly trying to find like, what is the vibe where, what should we do? We should go to this restaurant. Is this the vibe? And I feel like I am just the stable vibe. Like, I don't have to worry about that. I just go out and I just am the vibe. Like, <laughs> oh, wow. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, uh, like, and then it's not like other people, like I'm not expecting other pe- people to adopt it or anything, but like, I don't really think about like creating, and I don't know, <laughs> that's what I would think. Emotions and vibe and yeah. Yeah, no, it makes perfect sense to me. Uh, yeah. how, what about you tomorrow? Uh, yeah, I, when, you, when you said that about uh, like, uh, he, he doesn't want to make more money, like I just, I think it makes sense uh, because uh, if you look at studies, uh, like, uh, uh, okay, sure, you, if you're poor, you're going to be miserable and you, you will be like happier and have a good life if you earn more money, but just only to a certain point, like once you reach a certain point, like, and that's, I, I don't know the numbers, but it's much lower than you think. And so I, I think it's kind of stupid, but, but I don't know. I'm I'm ST last, so maybe uh, maybe the those uh, people who want to earn a lot of money, maybe they're like SE or or um, or high ST uh, because uh, okay, like they have a number. Okay, so you earn more money. Okay, we can measure this. You, you can't really measure. Oh yeah, you can measure your quality of life but uh, it's um, it's much more difficult and uh, yeah I, I don't have to and I don't have to measure I just feel it like uh, uh, like uh, there was a video like many oh, like a long time ago uh, where Sean and Dave talked about um, well what was it like uh, um, like T people say, uh, well, if it, wor- if it works, I'm happy. But uh, F people are more like, uh, if I'm happy, then I know that it works. So I don't really have to do this extra little dance of the ST uh, to figure out, like, okay, how much do I earn? Uh, because uh, w- why would I? <laughs> I? I mean, I'm... Uh, uh, maybe that's really maybe I'm a simple person, but uh, uh, yeah, and I, I've discussed this with a friend too. Like uh, we were thinking, uh, what, what would happen if we would win on the lottery, like a huge sum of money? What, what would realistically happen? And uh, we came to the conclusion, like okay, so either you say to people, uh, like, I want this big sum of money, but then your relationship with everyone is going to change. Like, uh, you you would feel guilty maybe if, uh, you know, that maybe they were, they didn't have enough money and, uh, like, should I, should I give them something or should I, would that be wrong or would they feel awkward about it or... Or like that, or, or if we travel, like, can um, what what will happen then? Will I pay for everything, or how will our relationship change, or should I keep it secret? So in the end, like, uh, I don't know. Like, I I think that that's just a fantasy. Like, uh, winning a lot of money, it never plays out like the way you you think it will. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. And I think you were talking about the, the amount of money that'll, that'll the threshold of happiness. I think it's something like, I don't know how, uh, what it would be in Sweden, but I think it's something like 70 K it's like not that much. And after that, like, it's like, unless you're living in an area that's like really expensive, like nothing, it doesn't make you any happier to have any more money. Basically you only need the amount of money to get rid of all of your uh, survival issues, essentially like food, shelter. And then once that's over, like no amount of money essentially will make you any happier. It's all based on connection. And I guess after that, and I think that is kind of what 
FI superpower could be is like the need, even though that sounds like something an EJ would do, it's FI just wants like a deep connection, like not just tons of connections, just a deep connection with people. Yeah, because we, we stack like, yeah. Yeah, yeah right. that <laughs> um, so back to questions again. Uh, Tamara, this time you're going to ask uh, Courtney uh, the question first. Uh, do you have any questions, for Courtney? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I've been thinking a little more about uh, this uh, sleep thing since you have it last. So you're kind of an unusual, unusual <laughs> INFP. She likes that. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Um, <laughs> I've been asked by uh, by more extroverted people, like, how does it feel like this sleep thing? Uh, like, uh, what, what, uh, how do you know that you can't expend energy? Like, why don't you just do stuff? And uh, of course, like, like we talked about before, like you, you always think yourself is the most normal. But I thought about it like my body says no. Like I had um, a lot of uh, issues with um, I I clench my teeth uh, whenever I get stressed, um, so I have to have a night guard at, at night, and and uh, I can feel like. Uh, my body is producing cortisol or whatever hormone that's uh, telling you to stop. Um, so I, I was thinking about how, since you have sleep last, uh, like, do you ever uh, feel like in your body that uh, the body says no, uh, and you have, to, you have to like calm down and take a step back and relax or yeah. Or does that happen like uh, in the end when you're like already burned out or how, yeah. how does that that's a really good question actually because I don't I actually don't feel <laughs> my body like ever until my body like physically shuts down like I will I will like go 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 I will like I can like break a bone and like keep going and I will not like I'll, I'll feel the pain but I won't care about it I'll just keep going until my body like physically like will not let me go anymore and that's like, yeah. And I guess that's something I was wondering about you too. Like, how do you experience like pain? Cause I don't, I, I have a very binary, like view, not view, but like feel like the way I experience pain, like it's either there or it's not. And I don't care about it ever. So I can keep going, but yeah. I wonder how you experience that. Um, yeah, uh, that, that's an interesting question. Um, like, but there are, there are different kinds of pain. There's like this uh, acute pain, like uh, um, someone drops a, a stone at your foot or something, or, or that, that's and there's this like low intensity uh, pain. Um, I think I can do like the low intensity stuff pretty good if I have, like if my FI is set onto something, like I will literally turn uh, heaven and earth upside down just to get what I value. Uh, so that that has its uh, good and bad sides, of course, but, um, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I try to avoid pain if I can. Um, uh, I've been thinking like uh, when I was younger, I thought like, okay, so how, how am I, what, what am I gonna do? Like, am I gonna have uh, a family or am I gonna have kids? And like just the thought of uh, like giving birth, that's, um, that's a bit traumatizing I think like I don't know how I would do that I uh, I don't know I just feel uh, awful just thinking about that <laughs> that's interesting yeah because actually like the idea of giving birth to me like doesn't really scare me I guess what does scare me is like I won't know what my body's doing and it'll be a shutting down in a lot of ways that I won't be able to control 
and like I won't know what to do that's mm-hmm. the part that scares me like the physical pain of giving birth like doesn't scare me I don't like care about pain I don't care like any level of pain at all uh, I'm starting to learn <laughs> but yeah so that's interesting I always attached it to I guess s like I know a lot of people who I I don't know that they have se or si but I suspect they do and they have a lot but better handle on physical sensation like I physical sensation like does not make sense to me like pain anything like that's why I like run into things I think and like hurt myself and not even know because like the world like the physical world like just doesn't make any sense like it, I can't make sense of it yeah I see you have a tattoo as well yeah on your arm. I have this yeah. one and I have another one I can't get this one to show oh there we go <laughs> yeah, yeah and it was was it painful it was painful like I I recognized that this was painful but like I could do it I could do it again I, I don't really care <laughs> <laughs> Like, it's not like I don't feel it at all. I just don't know the intensity. Like, there's no scale. There is either pain or not. Like, that's it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Courtney, you're making the sleep last. People look crazy. <laughs> not crazy. Yeah, no, but, but I, I relate to what you said. Because, <laughs> um, you know, you know that day that we were supposed to do this interview and then, like, I, I, I scheduled it for the wrong time. Like, because <laughs> I put it in my calendar the wrong day. Actually, you know, obviously, if I check my phone, I could have at least, you know, try to start it late, right? But actually, I had a sleep last crash in that day. No, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, my, my my body just shut down. I passed out. And then, like, it was, like, three hours later, and I checked my phone. I'm like, oh, crap, I missed the interview. No. <laughs> so, so it was, like, a yeah, double Yeah, that one. happens to yeah. me. I will literally yeah. just shut down at, at some yeah. point. <laughs> yeah, you'll yeah. just turn off. <laughs> my body's like, you can't, like, I'm not physically letting you do this. Like, yeah. it's not a decision. It's, like, your body won't. It. <laughs> Oh, hate it. Stupid, stupid yep. sleep last. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, we have time for one last question between you two, and then we'll wrap up the interview. So final okay. question. Any burning question you have for your opposite jumper type or standard type? I, I have one. Come, come uh, on, go, go for it. Yeah. So uh, both FI, SI, uh, like I've been like really ridiculous about crushes. So I was wondering if, if you uh have the same experience like like if crushes like like falling in love is that what you mean yeah like okay so this is a good question it's kind of weird so i also have and i think in my interview my earlier interview i talked a little bit about this i have a really weird experience of gender and like people like i don't really understand gender <laughs> either um but also I do fall deeply in love with people like my um I've actually only had one partner my entire life and I fell very deeply in love with her it's a uh so I'm in okay backstory I am married to a trans woman (laughs) who it was we were married and she was um, a guy and when when I um met her she was a guy and I fell very very deeply in love with her um to the point where when she told me she was trans I was like cool like I don't care I'm that in love with you like I literally don't also I didn't understand gender either but yeah and I literally stalked her for like eight months <laughs> like, I took a I like took a photo of her uh it, I, I, we were like 15 when this happened um and I'm gonna look like a crazy person but here we go um I was like, hey, let me um, let me take photos of like all my friends. I literally only wanted a photo of her and I wanted to like stare at it at night because like I was in love with her. <laughs> and she didn't even know for the, like the longest time. So yeah, <laughs> I have pretty intense, deep crushes. I want, uh, how do you experience that? Yeah, I mean, um, uh, well, I, I, I hope that it would be uh, getting better over the years, but it's, it hasn't. <laughs> But um, yeah, I feel like really, really intensely uh, about crushes, and uh, yeah, people think I'm I'm kind of stupid and I have to move on and uh, and everything. And but um, I mean, uh, the it it's not about like that I don't get or anything. Like it's just that I'm another type of person that 
those people who say that to me uh, because I uh, like that's who I am I uh, it's the FI and SI it's like uh, okay I I I like this I don't like that and uh, it can be I mean it, it can be uh, it doesn't have to be like romantic either it it can be like friends also like yeah. I have I agree with that. Yeah. I only want to be with this this friend and uh, yep. yeah yeah. When I make friends, I make friends for life. Like when you when I when I've got you, like I don't let go. No. <laughs> yeah, most of my friends are from like elementary school. Like it's insane. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, same that's, same that's for really me. Good. Yeah, yeah. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're doing something right for for like a, an INFP. You know, if you can. I guess. Yeah, yeah. You're, <laughs> Yeah. Um, I have like three friends, but like they're deep friends. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you don't need that. You don't need that many. I think you just need to yeah. have the right one. So yeah. 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 And I don't think Tamara knows, but uh, Tamara, I, Courtney said that his, uh, uh, her wife is an ENTP. Mm -hmm. ENTP. Okay. ENTP. It's hard. ENTP. It's a hard ENTP. one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's not a it's not a common pairing INFP and ENTP. You know? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah, it's it's. A, so. Um, she's taught me a lot throughout the years. Uh, with that TI, um, I'm surrounded by TI. My mother, I think, is TI. Stephanie's TI, my best friend, and my partner is TI. So I'm just like being pummeled by TI all the time. <laughs> um, it's great. Uh, but yeah, it's hard. We're very opposite. <laughs> Do you, do you, do you, um, do you, uh, what do you call it? Do you appreciate that, like, very difference in how you guys are? Like, it, like, is that something? Yeah, that definitely. It was hard at first, for sure. But once we got to know each other and once we, like, especially OP helped a lot, just understanding, like, this is why we're different. We're literally completely different types that are kind of contrasting in some ways. Um, and when we fight, we usually fight FI and TI typically. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but just knowing that was really, really big for us, I think. So. All right, cool. Um, so uh, we're going to wrap up the interview here. So uh, Courtney and Tamara, thanks for sharing more about yourselves as INFPs and, you know, digging deep about, you know, crushes and whatnot and, and how, how you're going to feel valuable and you know Courtney's crazy story about not feeling pain you know, or 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 not or shutting down, kind of like a. Mm -hmm. like you a know robot. what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I know we're the same. So for for that, you know. Crazy, it's fine. So, yeah. Sleep less. Exactly. So, <laughs> thanks again, guys, and now uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Awesome. Well, thank you. This was great. This right. was really yeah yeah. It was great to meet you, Tamara. This is great. I gotta <laughs> like maybe someday you'll have to meet my little sister because I think yeah. you're really similar to her. We should get together yeah. sometime online because I think you're in Sweden yeah. <laughs> or wherever you are. Well, you're welcome here if you want to. Awesome. Oh, no, the Courtney's going to go there for sure. <laughs> I yeah. actually want to move to Sweden. Like, I love Sweden. It's like my number one on my list, actually, if like, I could ever like get out of America. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. See you guys. Right. Bye. Yeah. Thank you.